Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and this is a safe. But we should give it a crack. <laughs> oh God. So, two things to start off with. First of all, there is some branding on this safe, which I've removed because if we find some inherent security flaw or something, I don't want everybody readily to be able to go out and crack that safe. Seems unlikely, but belt and braces. Second of all, this is one of the cheaper end of the Spectrum safes, hopefully for obvious reasons. Um, you know, I'm not going to destroy like a £5,000 safe. Hopefully I won't destroy this one, but you never know. So let's get the electronics off of this and have a look at what we're dealing with. So this runs off of four AA batteries. Let me see the compartment there. And this one also has a built-in sounder. It says it's 130 decibel alarm, which I really don't want to anger. I don't think that'd do my ears any favors. And I should say, I haven't actually played with this as a safe. Let's have a look at how it works. I've got a horrible feeling the sort of main brains of this is going to be kind of a glop top. I think it's going to be fairly proprietary, and even if it's not proprietary, it's going to be well guarded. But what I am hoping is it's going to offer something interesting for the mechanical interlocks, sort of the electromechanical interface. For anybody that's never owned a safe or used a safe, they will always have a mechanical override because imagine what it would happen if you had this closed and the batteries died or leaked or failed or something. You still want to be able to get in and that key then enables the lever on the front to open and remove the deadbolts. And I'm trying to decide whether they are two parallel mechanisms which sort of uh, hold the deadbolts in or whether it's literally a mechanical override on whatever that electro mechanical interface is. Let's have a look. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the keypad's only attached to a zebra stripe uh, through a little contact pad. That seems uh, sketchy. Keypad off the front, keypad. In fact, the LEDs, the red and the green LEDs aren't even on the keypad. They're in the box and they just shine through holes in the front. Slightly sketchy. A little membrane blister type keypad. <laughs> Rubbish. So the sounder we have here is, looks like it's soldered onto the board. We've got the actuation, this solenoid. Let's see if we can work out how this. So that's now locked. You've got two dead bolts keeping the door closed. Now, if I have the override key, see that actuates. Oh, it actually releases the electromechanical, the solenoid. That allows you to withdraw the bolts again. That's nicer than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. But that, that solenoid is the only thing, that spring, that, that preload on the spring, it's the only thing preventing you from withdrawing that bolt, which makes me think there is a very simple attack you could use to open this. Even if this was fitted to a wall, and you know, it came with a couple of decent, what are they, M8 rule bolts uh, that would fix it to the wall or to the floor. I think there's probably enough slop in the hinges and things that a fairly me simple mechanical attack would attack would get that open. Well, failing that, a giant magnet would do it. If you put a magnet somewhere towards the bottom of that solenoid and got that to pull down, that door would just spring open. That is not secure. Ooh. Okay, let's get the solenoid off of the... No, let's leave that there. There's no need to take that off if it's plugged which it is, which is fantastic news. Move all of this out of the way. It looks like a huge battery compartment when you haven't got the lock in it. Uh, 
And actually, they've connectorized the battery connector as well, which means I don't have to get the soldering iron out or cut anything. Oh, hey. Ah, it's not even a glob top. Like the best thing ever. So there's the sounder for the alarm. That's on its own lead as well. And you've got the tactile switch here for programming. So that's how you set, set a new code. And this, that actually interfaces with the back of the lock bolt to uh, set the alarm off. So what is the IC we have here? So that little IC is a Sonics SN8P2612SG, which is an 8-bit microcontroller. That's it. That's what's protecting all your valuables. So on this side, you've got a little sounder, which will be the beat that you won't get when you press the buttons. You've got two LEDs, red and green, just five mil LEDs, uh, nothing special at all. Standard micro switch connector for the battery sounder and the solenoid. This big beast here, that's a diode. This diode on the back here is the freewheel diode. So when the solenoid deactivates, the collapsing magnetic field can send high current and back through the circuit. So it has a diode next to it so that it can just sort of freewheel around its own little circuit and not damage the IC. Otherwise, it's a cute little PCB. And I wonder if you can get to any programming headers so you could put your own software on here. That might be fun. So it's kind of weird to see this, this huge big metal safe. And I guess it doesn't really matter what capacity safe you go for or what complexity of the mechanism and how many bolts you have. This could still drive it. And it's always cool to see electronics being the heart of something very serious and very physical, but still with... Uh, the parts that electronics engineers put together. I hope you found this one interesting. If you've got an idea for a teardown that you'd like to see, jump over to the Element 14 community. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.